was when uh, Kevin Hunter, Wendy Williams' husband, uh, asked me to be Wendy Williams' co-host. And he said, look, I can't pay you, but I can give you a place to stay. Now, I was living in South Carolina at the time. Uh, I was working at Howard Do Not. For me to pack up and move with, I don't know, $1,500 in my bank account, I wasn't making no money. Like, like for me to pack up and move from South Carolina, Columbia, South Carolina, to the, the Manhattan, New York, and not be getting paid. You know how many kids nowadays that have been like, hell no, I'm not doing that. I got a million followers on Instagram. I'm not doing, I'm not working for free. I always say, man, a lot of people don't recognize the opportunity if there's not a paycheck attached to it. But I knew that if I took that position, that I could write my own ticket. And that's eventually what happened. But all of that is part of the process. Like everything I've been through in my life, the four firings, you know, this being the seventh radio station I worked at, like whatever it was, all of that is part of the process. And you can't skip the process, no matter what you're doing in your life. I don't care what field you're chasing. I don't care what dream you have. There's a process to get there. You gotta put the weed in the motherfucking bag first before you hit the box and go get money. So that's what that whole concept of putting the weed in the bag is about. That's principle number five in my book. Now, principle number six is live your truth, which is also another one of my favorites. Anything that derives from hip-hop is one of my favorites, and I'm going to tell you what live your truth is. Live your truth is always live your truth. That way no one can use your truth against you. When you are completely honest about yourself and with yourself, you give zero fucks about anything anyone has to say about you. People can slander you all day with no judgment or opinion formed against you South prosper when you live your truth. That's why I always say character is better than reputation. Like, you know, I, I, I go on social media sometimes and I see a lot of perceptions about me that people have. I see a lot of narratives people have about me. But I can't concern myself with the opinions of others. If you've never sat down and kicked it with me, if you've never sat down and have a conversation, if you don't deal with me on a daily basis, my actual character is what allows me to sleep at night. My actual character is more important than anybody's perception of me. Now, the whole live your truth concept stems from two, well, quite a few people in hip hop, but really two that stand out the most. Uh, number one is Eminem. When Eminem said, uh, at the end of Eight Mile, he said, he deep, in a freestyle battle, he said everything about himself that his opponent could possibly say. Now, I know you heard Gary Vaynerchuk probably say that. I think he got that from me. That's my guy. Love Gary. Was on his show this week, asked Gary V. But I think I had a little bit of influence with that one. Okay? But, you know, Eminem said everything about himself, so it disarmed his victim. So that's what living your truth is all about. When, when you own whatever it is about yourself, whether it's physical or mental or the way you walk, anything, when you own it, can't nobody use it against you. Also, when Biggie Small said, I'm black and ugly as ever. However, he said he stayed Gucci down to the socks. All I'm simply telling people is, you just have to have a however. It don't matter what it is you got going on in life, whatever uh, perceived handicaps are, you know, perceived uh, uh, cosmetically challenging. You know, I mean, it's not all even about looks, just whatever you feel that is something that people may look at and try to poke at you about. It don't matter as long as you have a however. Your however can be your charisma. Your however can be your intelligence. Your however can be your humor. You know, for me, I feel like my however, contrary to popular belief, is manners. Manners will take you where money won't. That's something my grandma told me a long time ago. So I, I know I'm not the smartest person in any room. May not even be the most talented person in any room, but I can walk in and be the nicest. Walk in and see what's up there. Everybody treat the custodian. You see, look how I pronounce custodian. Y'all know what I'm talking about, the janitor. Treat the janitor the same way I treat the CEO. That's just the way the game goes. So I just feel like you always got to have a high level. That's, just, and that, that's part of just living your truth. Knowing what your perceived uh, limitations may be. Knowing what your perceived handicaps may be. And just owning them. Making your handicaps your motherfucking scripts. So that's what the Live Your Truth chapter is about. So right now we're up to six different chapters, man. We're up to... Oh, one more thing about the Little Truth chapter. That's actually what kind of like pro propelled me in the radio game because I don't have a formal education in the radio game. Like when I first started doing radio at D93 Jam in Charleston, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. So all I could do was just go there and be me. Being me is the easiest thing to do. I can just wake up in the morning and be me. I'm not trying to front for nobody. I'm not trying to pretend to be something I'm not. I'm not trying to pretend to be more well-versed in something that I am. If I don't know something, I ask questions. I just, you know, I just know how to be me. 
and me not having a formal education in radio just allowed me to go on there and be myself. And being myself is what got me to this position. So that's part of living your truth. So that's chapter six. So we got two more chapters to talk about on these uh, Facebook live streams. But I just want everybody to go out there. You can pre-order Black Privilege Opportunity comes to those who create it at uh, Amazon, Barnes and Nobles. Go to seethegodworld.com. And let me give you some dates, right? Because everybody may. How long about Monday? Oh, Monday we're doing a um, we're doing a live stream. Yes, and by the way, when you buy the audio book, which I narrated myself, y'all know I can't pronounce anything that starts with S T. So it's strange, strange, strong, like all of that. So we're doing a live stream at 11 a.m. It's gonna be uh, live from my Facebook and uh, YouTube, and you can get an autographed copy of my book. It's a live signing. So basically, during the signing, if you purchase the book, or you can go to um. To see the signed book, go to C-T-H-A-S-I-G-N-E-D-Book.com. C-T-H-A-S-I-G-N-E-D-Book.com. See the signed book.com. And you can sign up, purchase the book there at Premier Collectibles, and type in your name and all that good stuff, and I'll autograph it for you during the live signing at 11 a.m. on Monday. Got a lot of people dropping by. I think uh, NBA and Angelique. I want to be moderating that for me. So that's Monday at 11 a.m. Now let me give you some of these dates because I want to see y'all when I'm out here in these streets on this book tour, all right? Now, first and foremost, April 17th, Powerhouse Arena, 7 p.m., okay? Moderated by my sister, the warrior goddess of woke, okay? Queen Angela Rye, General Rye. She'll be moderating that April 17th, Powerhouse Arena in Brooklyn, 7 p.m., April 18th, we'll be at the Barnes and Nobles on 5th Avenue at 7.30 p.m. That's just a signing. Uh, April 19th, I'll be in Dallas, Texas. Salute to all my Cowboy fans out there. We'll be at Paul Quinn College at 4 p.m. Salute to everybody at Paul Quinn College. They've been hitting me up on social media crazy. April 20th, 420, I will be high at The Grove, Barnes and Nobles, Los Angeles, California, 6 p.m. Moderated by my homie, Carrie Champion. Salute to Carrie Champion. What up, fancy face? Uh, April 22nd, Atlanta, Georgia, Georgia Tech, Barnes & Noble College, 12.30 p.m. I'll be there. That's moderated. Who's moderating that? I saw the name today. Uh, Where? In Georgia? Yeah. I forgot his name. Asian guy. I'll tell you in a second. Uh, also, April 22nd, I'll be at Acapella Books at 4 p.m. in Atlanta, Georgia. Then April 23rd, I'll be home in, Ch in Charleston, South Carolina at 843. I'll be at the Pure Theater. That's sponsored by Blue Bicycle Books, 12 p.m. Uh, same day, I'll be in Columbia, the Metro at Books a Million. Um, that's at 5 p.m., moderated by BZ Baby. And Charleston is moderated by uh, Tessa Spencer. Who's the Tessa Spencer? She was part of my process growing up, part of me putting the weed in the bag. I tell that story in the book. Uh, BZ Baby, April 23rd, Columbia, South Carolina, Pure Theater. Uh, April 26th, I'll be at Ridgewood, New Jersey at Bookends at 6 p.m. And May 4th, I'll be at, in Washington, D.C. at the event space. That's at 7 p.m., also moderated by Angela Rye. But, you know. How about Saturday, too? What's Saturday? You're going to the C3 conference. And Tomorrow, I'll be in Columbia, South Carolina at 803 at the C3 conference. Um, I'm the keynote speaker for that. <clears throat> so, salute to the Met. I'll see y'all tomorrow. I will be stopping at Chick-fil-A. You know? I'm definitely doing that. But, um, yeah, man. Go get this for me. I really want y'all to, to, to read this. If you, don't, if you don't ever know nothing about Charlemagne, if you don't hear nothing from Charlemagne ever again on this level, this right here will tell you all that you need to know about your boy. And I just really, man, I just really hope this book empowers somebody and enlightens somebody. I hope some, some kid reads this book and it sparks something in him, the way he reading, you know, the autobiography of Malcolm X, or reading, uh, you know, niggas, from Niggas to God by a kill, or reading the Four Agreements, or reading Rise of the Secret sparks something in me. Because, you know, I don't know about everybody else, but I am one of those people that is actually from what he says he's from. And that's a dirt road in most parts of South Carolina, a rural area. The only reason I'm here by the power of God and because God sparked something in me a long time ago to help me recognize who I really am on this planet. So, you know, if you don't think it's a privilege to be black, if you don't think it's a privilege to be whatever it is that you are, I don't know what to tell you. 
I can only embrace what God made me to be. I'm a black man. I don't think he made a mistake by doing that. Okay? So, please, go pre-order my book right now. And you can go to uh, See the God World, C-T-H-A-G-O-D World.com and see all the tour dates and, you know, get your tickets to all those events and it'll take you to pre-order links to buy the book and all that good stuff. And 29 Common Sense, 11.30 p.m. I'm about to go in there with Crystal and get right. Okay? Okay. Peace.